I'm going and then I'll let folks in. Oh no. Damn. So you're Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Black Latina Summit Travel Edition. My name is Crystal Shanice Roman, and I'm the CEO and founder of the Black Latina Movement, a theater and film production company here in New York City that travels with our shows, our theater shows, our workshops. And um, the summit was a call to action that we had taken about, um, I would say over a year and a half ago. It was a way of connecting with our audiences that we weren't able to connect because of the pandemic. And it was just a way for us to continue to serve our community and talk about topics for us, by us, that still inspire us in many different ways. And even though the pandemic is slowly ending, you know, God willing, um, we see that it's still something that connects us and unifies our community and something that we know that our audience loves and yearns for and gravitates. So we're continuing to have them. So this week is about about uh, travel and how that has affected us um, as people of color throughout history, what that means for us, even recently, uh, post-COVID, uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID, and we're gonna dive into what that means for us. So as always with our summits, feel free to engage in the chat room um, and just ask, ask as many questions as you want, comment to the ladies and the guests that we have today. Um, we have some fun, um, awesome topics that we're going to discuss and dive into. And so without any further ado, I would love to introduce our guest for today. Um, today we have Erica Starr, a personal blogger, travel influencer, and lifestyle specialist. Her personality and charisma allows her to, challenge, to channel a vast and diverse array of cultures and backgrounds across the globe. With her eye for fashion, the artful touch, and abundance for life, Erica is undeniably inspirational. Naturally connected and networking professional and personally as a traveler, she is continuously stepping into the off the beat path mantra, leading her to destinations unknown, interfacing her life with the locals and experiencing places where her audience can travel along the way, making any vacation memorable. Hi, Erica. <laughs> Good afternoon, anyone. Happy Saturday. So happy to see you guys here. Yes, 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 yes. We're so excited to have you today. We're going to have I'm a blast. happy to be here as well. Thank, Thank you, you thank so you. much. And next we have Nienza Jones. Nienza is a travelpreneur, visual storyteller, wellness influencer, and certified goofball. Her platform focuses on how to maintain your health while traveling and learning how to find the best vegan eateries. She also created a domestic and international city guides for women and men who want to travel the world but don't have the time to plan their own trips. Hey, Nianza. Hello, hey guys. Thank you, thank you both you ladies. Um, what you both do is so important to our community because traveling has kind of been throughout the years, right? For, set, for a long time has kind of been taboo for people of color when we watch movies like The Green Book, right? And how the South had like sundown laws where even artists, they couldn't travel and, and, and you know, just be, be themselves and be in their profession because you couldn't go somewhere if you were a certain color at a certain time of night. So traveling for, for people of color has been a challenge throughout the years. And we've, as always, as, as great and, um, as great as we are, right? We always can push through and make it work and not allow anything to get in the way of, of what we wanna do. We've been able to really take travel and now you see so many people of color traveling, so many women of color traveling. We talked about that last night, Erica, how you just see tons of black women getting together utilizing the opportunity to travel and the same way we could see, you know, other other races and they've taken that 
and um, made that their thing. Now we get the same privileges of saying we're women of color, we're making a certain amount of money and we're able to just do our thing, right? So I want to get into, into it with you ladies on um, traveling post-COVID, right? Like COVID shut down so many things for us. We were still able to travel, but it was like, ugh, it was it was a little bit difficult during COVID. And then some of us didn't want to travel. Some of us didn't feel comfortable. We were limited to where we could go. So what do you think has changed now? What was the difference now, beside the obvious differences between post-COVID, pre-COVID and post-COVID? And either one of you or both can answer that. I can go ahead and answer. Um, so for me, I didn't see a huge difference. I felt like I was going to risk it all and just continue to travel during the pandemic and continue to travel during COVID. I know it was very risky. Um, so many people be, were affected and so many people died because of the COVID and pandemic that was going on. But I, I'm a traveler. And this is what I do. And I decided to just go out there and just show others that you don't have to have the fear of traveling. Because even if you're home, I'm from New York City, you can be home and go across the street and something bad could happen to you. Sure. So I decided to just hop on the plane. I decided to be very, very, very conscious of what was going on in, in the world. But I showed via my stories and my posts that we can still be safe and be healthy and still travel to other countries. And also they have rules and regulations that you have to, you know, follow. So it, there was different, there was little differences in the countries that I traveled to or even cities, you know, for instance, I went to the Dominican Republic and they had to shut down the city by like 5 p.m. or 3 p.m. So there were differences. You couldn't go out as much. And it's okay. You don't have to be outside at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. You can enjoy your city during the day. So I was able to enjoy the city, be healthy, be safe, and just continue what I do, show others that we can still travel, we can still visit our families, but just be very conscious of what was going on in the world. And I think that I did a good job at it. And I encourage others to just step out. I see one of the, um, I see someone here that I know that I actually encouraged her to go to Mexico with me last November. And it was great and we had a great time and we were just, we had our mask on when so we had to have our mask on, you know, wash our hands, just, you know, continue to do the things that we're supposed to do during the pandemic. And I thought it was great. Um, now, fast forward to people traveling now, it's a little bit, I feel like now it's more tedious just because now you have to take COVID tests to go to the countries. You must take a COVID test to enter the US. You must, um, uh, you must buy insurance now. So I think now it's a little bit more difficult than when I was actually traveling during the pandemic because now you have to buy insurance in certain countries. You have to take a COVID test pre and after you um, travel. And these are just little things that I put on my stories and just let people know and, you know, just give them the information that they might not need. And you always need to just, um, you need to research where you're going. And it's very important because if you're, tra you're traveling somewhere and they have all these guidelines and you didn't educate yourself, that's on your part. So I try my best to just encourage others, give them as much information, but there are, there's a lot of differences now because now you must, like for instance, I went to St. Martin last week and you have to get insurance. You must, um, you must do a check-in every single day with that country wow. to make sure that you don't have a fever, that you're not feeling sick. So every country has different guidelines. So whatever's Whatever you feel most comfortable, that's where you should go. So what I believe that, you know, you can just get up and just still travel. I feel like the biggest difference I've seen are these airline prices, okay? Because uh, wow. in the pandemic, it was like, oh, you want to go to Mexico for 99 cents? Here you go. Now, these airlines are trying to get their money back and... Yes. Um, it's like they say, it's expensive to go outside now. 
Yes. Um, I definitely have, I think, seen a boost in travel because when this first started, I don't think a lot of people knew what COVID was. There was a lot of um, speculation about if this was real or not. So I'll speak from my experience. A lot of my friends and I, we weren't traveling at first. It was like, okay, let's see how this plays out. Um, I definitely have seen a lot more people feel more comfortable going out now. I don't know if that's like built up tension because we've all pretty much been indoors for about a year um, or people are feeling more comfortable because some people are vaccinated or they want to get, um, they're feeling a little bit safer or more comfortable. Um, but I've definitely seen a bigger increase now in travel and then a lot more countries are kind of opening up but just to piggyback on what Eric said like please do your research that's like my number one rule as well because these um I have to create like city guides for people and the rules change on a weekly so one day the rules are this how you can enter a country and the next day is something else so um just be very very mindful of that <laughs> for sure yeah. And it's true. I think that, um, you know, like Erica was saying before, being afraid doesn't really, I mean, we just have to be cautious, right? We can't be too um, fearful of going out because no matter what, we can cross the street and get hit by a car and something bad can happen. But at the same time, um, being um, mindful, being responsible, knowing that our surroundings, who we're going to be with. And then, like you said, Nianza, these prices now are like ridiculous. <laughs> It's almost as if they're really like, we get it. It's the, the economy is down. They're trying to make back their money, but it's in a way where you're charging me a price for a ticket that I would have, it's, it's almost like I went on the trip twice. <laughs> Some of these prices is ridiculous. So with that, I want to go into the next kind of idea of how can we travel on a budget? Because, you know, traveling, you need a budget no matter what. And I think now with everything and inflation just getting so ridiculous where, you know, the prices for um, the airlines, the hotels, Ubers, I'm seeing this huge price surge. What's, what are some kind of tips you can give people to travel on a budget where we can get a bang for our buck? You go into these beautiful countries, you want to go on an excursion, you want to go to see the museums. How can we do this? and still not kill ourselves because we're still in the pandemic and these people are trying to make their money back, but we work hard for hours. So what are some tips that you ladies can give us for traveling on a budget? I feel like domestic travel is something a lot of people don't talk about as much. And I know it doesn't seem as glamorous as international travel. Um, I've been traveling all my life. So I, I love using my little blue book. But there's a lot uh, to do here in the United States. Um, so, um, and that's what I kind of did last year. I wasn't really fearful of traveling at all. I kind of, I, I eat very well. I had to take my supplements and herbs, but it was like coming in and out of all the rules that were going on. I was like, I don't even want to deal with it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, um, there's just certain places that I've been traveling here and it was a lot cheaper. I love road trips too. I know that's not for everybody, but I'm a big road trip person. I will pack my car and go down to um, Houston and Austin in a heartbeat. And that's pretty, that's a great way to save money. Um, what I also advise if you are doing international travel, um, there are certain sites you can go to where you can find travel deals. And so although um, these flights have gone up, every now and then you can uh, catch a travel deal. So I love starting with Google Flights. That's my go-to. Um, and you can kind of compare prices there. Um, I also, if you live, I live in Dallas, but there's um, a site called cheapdfw.com. Um, and then the flightdeal.com, um, that was great beforehand. Um, so those are, there's certain little uh, places Hopper was another app I was using, but it's a hit or miss because sometimes it will say this is the cheapest time to buy and then you wait and it's it's still pretty expensive. But uh, that's another app that I say use. But um, yeah, those are kind of my go to's uh, for right now, um, saving money um, on on travel. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um traveling domestically is very affordable, but it also has 
like my sister lives in Chicago. She was trying to come to New York this week. She's on vacation. And just for her to come here, it was about $500 mm -hmm. from Chicago. And we just went to Antigua and Barbuda for $300. Mm -hmm. So you have to always check, check your prices, check your locations, and just check your off-peak seasons as well. Like Obviously, right now, this is June, July, August. Everyone's on vacation. So this is going to be the most expensive time. I love to travel when no one travels. So I love to travel like in January and March, November, October, September, December always is my birthday. But I like to travel in times that not everyone is traveling. And I know it's not the same for everyone. There's people that have kids and, you know, that can't get certain time off. But it's, so it's a little bit more difficult. But you should always just try to compare websites, compare, um, like she said, Google Flights. I love Google Flights because it does a comparison for you. But you also, but you really just want to compare different sites and try to see what discounts you might get from like a Travelocity or a Booking.com. For, for my experience, I have T-Mobile. So T-Mobile Tuesdays, I get to use 40% off my bookings because, mm -hmm. as a T-Mobile member. I also have a Chase um, Sapphire credit card in which my points I can use towards travel for um, travel, for bookings. I can use those points and it becomes a higher value once I use it for travel. So it's so, 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 so awesome that I can do that. There was times that I would travel for $10 because I, I, I accumulated so much points that I only paid $10 for a trip to Dominican Republic or to um, Texas because I have points. So you always want to just research what your credit card, what benefits you have with your credit cards. You want to research what benefits you can get from maybe uh, like me, I have T-Mobile. What can they offer for you? Go to, go to your Google flights, go to your um, trip advisors. Trip advisors is now like comparing um, hotels now. So you just want to do your research. Like I don't just, just stick to one thing. I always spend time just trying to compare see maybe when the prices might go lower so i'll just travel in those days so that's the best way to budget just don't go for the first thing you see just you know try to compare i know that some people think is a, is a myth that travel traveling and booking on tuesdays it's not real but for my experience me traveling during the week opposed to traveling during the weekend is much cheaper and it's much affordable and for me, definitely looking at flights Tuesdays and Wednesdays, in like at nine in the morning, when I the first thing I do is check and the flights are cheaper than when I check on a Friday. So for my experience, it's, it's true. The um, hotels and airlines are much cheaper if you look be beginning of the week opposed to the ending of the week. And just compare, like I said, you can get a flight to, I can go to Texas right now and they're going to charge me $300, but I can go to St. Martin for $300. So I would probably choose to go to Caribbean country for that $300. So that's my tip. Just compare, just, just research, try to go on, try to look on a Monday, Tuesday, travel during the week. And believe me, you will love to travel during the week because you don't have that rush from the weekend. So that's my travel tip for looking for um, cheaper flights or hotels. And like me, I love luxury and I love also budget. So it, it just depends on what, what do you want at the moment? So I love that because, um, oh, go ahead, Nianza, go ahead. I was gonna say one more thing. Um, I think too, also it depends, uh, look, the countries that you go to, also make the difference. So like if you are trying to save money, London is not going to be, like your dollar is not gonna go as far. Like the first time I ever went to London, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> um, but if you do go to certain places, like I'm trying to think of one of the cheapest places I've been to. I remember going to like Bali or Brazil, like your dollar goes a lot further. So um, sometimes it's not, 
always, um, while it's great to find uh, cheap flights too, sometimes um, it's like maybe you spend a little bit more on the ticket, but once you get there, you're not going to have to spend an arm and a leg. I mean, you can live like a queen in these other countries. And like Erica said, like she's all for luxury. Um, even the Philippines, I mean, we stayed in this like five star hotel for super cheap um, and it was fabulous. We got all of this like special treatment and um, it would have cost us an arm and a leg here in the United States. So I definitely say look up the different countries you're interested in because and see how your dollar um, it works for you when you're there. You're so right. I, I agree. That. I love that because, um, you know, we talk about you, you, there were certain things that you guys said, I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know Google does Google flights. Like I had no idea of that. So that's something to go off of. Um, I'm kind of one of those people where I'm like, and I know I'm like a lazy consumer. I will always use Expedia because I'm like, I got my little points and not do the extra work. So, you know, thank you both for sharing those gems, even with the T-Mobile stuff, um, points and stuff, like getting... Yeah, I'm like, I have team. I'm like, okay, right. team mobile. Like, let me get yeah. every Tuesday. You so much. I, I wrote that down. I was like, okay, team mobile. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And and I love that. And and that, and that's why you guys are the experts in this because a lot of us kind of just travel lazily where it's like, all right, this is what we always do. And this is what we're going to continue to do. Um, and so the next thing that I was going to ask you, which you guys kind of had already got into it, was about the peaks because... Um, I had just had one of my girlfriends had a big, um, we had a great weekend together. It was a girl's weekend at her home, my best friend. And um, it was like six of six or maybe, maybe maybe it was eight women, but we had such a great time together that we were like, okay, so let's plan a girl's like, let's do this annually and do like a girl's trip. But the next time it won't be in her home. It way and so we looked up Jamaica and it was vastly different going to Jamaica from a Thursday to a Sunday than from a Monday to a Thursday it was like thousand of dollar difference and so I think you know and so my my what I was going to say was is that taboo but now you know Erica you did confirm it does change it it's not a taboo it's not like a little thing where people say it and you're like I wonder if that's true or not it's very real the day that you travel. Um, and the answer to your point too, um, the countries you're going to, right? Because if I'm gonna spend a little bit of money on a flight, but then when I get there, my dollar is not gonna go far. I'd rather spend more money on a flight to get somewhere where my dollar is gonna go farther. So it's really about what kind of works for the person as a traveler and what they're looking for. Um, and so to me, that was that that's key. And you guys have really like drove, drove those points home um, in both instances. But when it comes to um, international travel and domestic travel, I know you both have said that um, it really depends on what you want to do and to really do your research. So like, what are some, um, what are some like places we can go to check outside of like the norm? Okay, we got to check the CCDC guidelines, but where are places that we could look to see the countries or, or the cities domestically or the countries um, internationally where we could find out, you know, where our money will go longer for us? You can always, oh, sorry. do you want to talk? No, I was going to say you could go first, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> Um, so the question is checking to see where the money will go longer for each mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. You would have, I personally, you would have to check. Um, sometimes countries have their own websites. Okay. So you can definitely check their own websites. You can also go to the embassy. Like every country has a web, has a website in which you can go into the embassy and just check out all the information you need from that country. And you can also you can also Google just Google the currency that they have. Google is it cheaper for me to go to Bali? Is it than going to Australia? Like you know, just Google and try to find these information. Like Nianza said, I went to Bali as well, and that was my cheapest trip that I've ever <laughs> been to. Crazy! I wow. couldn't believe that I went to such a lush and beautiful prestige country of Indonesia and then I spend the less and everyone's like you had to spend thousand dollars Erica to go to Bali I was like actually I did not it was so inexpensive but 
these are things that you Google. You, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to Bali. Where would my money go? So it's all about Googling and finding, going to their country websites and just finding out how can, the, or, or like even Google does currency as well. You can mm-hmm. see how you can see how your money will flow if you go there. So that's my I don't remember what else I have done, mm-hmm. but that's what I can remember from the top of my head. Okay. Absolutely 100 percent agree with Erica. Um, Google search, that's what I use. Um, I will also use travel um, dot state dot gov um, in advance as well to kind of look up just any information, kind of going back to like earlier conversations about COVID and stuff. Like that's a great way. Um, I think Erica was talking about um, certain countries have their own websites. So usually they have information on those countries and then you can go, they have like a link to those country websites. So that's a great go-to as well um but yeah it's it's as simple as that uh, uh i piggyback and agree with everything she just said um because that's what i do as well i think another thing too that um as women that we kind of get a little um a little fra- afraid about is when we travel um safety and security right because you hear certain things about other countries or you know there might be protests in one country or there might be crime raised in another country and we know we could go to LA and get robbed so it doesn't really matter we could get that could happen in our own country but what are some um what are some things you ladies do in regards to traveling or some tips when you're in a certain country regarding safety and your security as a woman because you know there's times that People, you know, you've heard stories, especially in the Caribbean, where you can't take certain cabs or you can't go certain places at night or there'll be people who are watching you and you'll think this person is doing one thing and they they trick you into another and you're somewhere completely else. So what are some, you know, really good best or best practices, I should say, for women who are traveling to certain countries that may have higher crime than others? So I have this rule and I always tell my followers this, it doesn't matter where I'm at, even when I'm home, I never post in real time. So if I don't, I, that, like, and it's crazy because people do, like I've had to um, tell my friends that and they're like, it's not like anybody's gonna find you. And I'm like, I've been stalked before. So it's real. So um, I think it's great because these social media platforms, you can record video and then you can save it. And then when I'm either on my way out, when I'm leaving a location or the next day, that's when I'll post. And um, I, I don't think people know how serious that is. That's like my number one rule. I also have um, used an app called Tripcase. My dad actually got me on it. And that's just a great way for you can put your itinerary in there. You can put your flights, uh, your hotel, everything, and it will update. You can send it to your friends and family um, via email. And that keeps them updated on, you know, where you're staying, when you're, it will even do flight updates if you have a delay. So that way, if you're traveling and they can't get a hold of you or you're, you're supposed to be somewhere, this is my full itinerary and that kind of keeps my family and friends um they kind of know where i'm at um and then i also choose like at least one person uh to know like what i'm doing that day um i typically travel with other people um a lot of my international trips i've done i've done like one it was solo ish i was meeting somebody there that i didn't um you know, we became friends later, but um, for the most part, I am always traveling with like one or two other people. So I feel a lot more comfortable um, doing it that way because I always have someone. And then I say for women too, another rule I have is when you go out and you know, you're having fun, um, watch your drinks. So if somebody wants to order your drink, that's fabulous, but you need to walk up there with them when they get the, um, if they're ordering a drink for you um, and, you know, keep it by your, your side. And I always try to finish it before, if I have to go to the bathroom, you know, try to finish it before I leave it and then go to the bathroom. Those are just, you know, 
it sounds like a lot, but I promise you, you know, these things will kind of keep you safe because people are, there's a lot of good people in the world, but there are, you know, a few crazy people. So those no, are- you're right, Nianza, because um, I, I'm so guilty and, and I see my best friend is on here and she's gonna, she, I'm sure after this, she's gonna text me a thousand times. I post in real time. And every time I post in real time, she screams like, if we're together, she's like, why are you doing this? I, take it off. Don't tag me in this. And, I, you know, I'm, I shouldn't because, you know, and, and, and sometimes I can be very, I can be naive in that sense. But when we travel, I do post in real time and I shouldn't post. So I need to stop doing that um, because she gets on me so much. Um, Sandra asks, what's the name of the app? And then Rosa said it's trip case. Is that it? Yes. Trip trip case. Case. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Erica, any, anything on your side? I totally agree with her. My number one rule is not posting while I'm at a location. I might, I might say, I'm gonna be, I might be very vague and be like, Hey, I'm in Toronto. Yeah. But I won't say where in Toronto I am. I won't say what hotel I'm staying at. I will. I, you won't see my actual story for that day. And my friends will always laugh at me or have jokes. Oh my God, Erica, you you're always posting. So are you really on vacation? Are you really? And I'm just like, I have to protect myself. No, I'm you're a right. female. I have to protect myself. Anyone can just see. Oh wow, look, she's leaving her hotel now. It's time to go to her Airbnb, our hotel, and just rob everything. Yeah. And either, either, either that, or you could be on vacation. Someone can try to go to your house in Dallas or in New York City and try to rob you or do something because they know you're away. So the smartest way to do is just not post on real time. And I've been telling my friends this for years. I'm like, I'm sorry, I just I won't do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, they're like, so you're still on vacation? I'm like, no, it's just you have to protect yourself. And also there's so much blogs and websites that will give you guidelines. Um, yes. And someone can kidnap you from the airport. Someone just yeah. wrote that that happened actually to one of my sister's friend in Argentina. She got kidnapped in Argentina. Um, and it was just crazy. Like you just have to be careful. So you want to go to this, there's so much blogs, there's so much websites that you can find like a list of places that women can travel to and it's very safe to travel. Um, there's certain places that you, you shouldn't travel because of the situation and what's going on in these countries, like you said, Crystal. Um, also, when you are traveling, if you are going to travel solo, just make sure that when you go, you check into your hotel, you know, if you want a taxi or anything, let, let, let the person at the hotel, the receptionist or let them take care of that for you instead of you just trying to flag down a taxi because you just don't know, like you just can't, you just can't trust everyone. And the hotel will at least know like, okay, she left at this time. She left with this, with this taxi driver and they will know at least some sort of information opposed to you just flagging down a cab. You don't even know if this person's going to take you somewhere that you don't even know, or even, or even use like the, like uh, apps, like I went to Mexico City and it's, you know, it's known to be very dangerous, but uh, me and my sister used, you know, Uber out there. We made sure that, you know, someone at a point of person knew that where we were, where we go, where we were going. So it's very important to just at least let someone know Mm -hmm. where you're going those days. That way someone knows where you are. So it's just very important. And, you know, you could be friendly. You could be friendly with other people, you know, ask them, what is there to do in certain certain places, but don't give too much information. Mm-hmm. Don't give them so much information. Like, hi, my name is Erica I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from New York, and I'm staying at this hotel and I'm leaving on Friday. Don't <laughs> I don't I don't recommend you doing that yeah, sure. because it's dangerous. Because they can be like, oh, she's leaving on this day. She's gonna go um, on, you know, on this hotel. Like, you know, you just want to be careful and protect yourself. Just don't give too much information. Don't post in real time have a point person that knows where you're going. Always check with your hotel. Your hotels has a contact with, you know, private taxis that, you know, can, if you're traveling solo, if you're traveling with with a group, you know, you always reserve your your car or your van 
in advance and you know you have a driver for the week if you're traveling with a group is different but traveling solo you just have to be very very careful and I love that. And, and that's a big takeaway for me. Like I, I will take that away from today's summit, ladies. I need to stop yeah. posting in real time. I post in real time. And I thank you for that because I know I can be naive and we all can, but you know, hearing it from you guys who are experts in traveling is something that I will definitely stop to do because it, it isn't, you know, <laughs> thank you. It isn't um, it isn't good to do. Um, but with the solo trips. Do you like, like, so yay or nay? Because I have certain friends who travel the world solo. They go on cruises solo. They do these elaborate trips. And for me, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Outside of security, right? Um, to me, there's a camaraderie to traveling where you're experiencing these moments and with things with other people. What are your take on solo trips? It's her hitter. Man. It's, it's who you are as a person. I think that's the most important thing is who you are as a person. If you don't feel comfortable in certain settings being alone, then you know you might not be good at a solo trip. If you're not good at talking to people or, you know, trying to meet up with people there and try to go excursions together, if you feel like you're going to be uncomfortable with that, then I wouldn't suggest for you to do a solo trip. You can maybe meet someone out there. You're leaving your, you know, your city alone and then meeting someone there. That would be great. But if you just don't, if you are not the kind of person that's, it's very social, you're very timid, and you just don't feel like, you, you, you can feel it. It's, it's, it's the energy and vibe that, that we have that you just know, like, you know, I don't feel, if you, if you say, oh, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable going, then don't go. You have to follow your, your energy. So I would, but I don't, I don't discourage anyone to go do a solo trip. I think it's, it's great. You can find yourself, you can find things about yourself that you didn't even know um you can meet so much amazing people that are there solo as well and you can eventually travel together and you learn so much you know just you don't have anyone holding you down with your schedule you can just leave when you want come back when you want you don't have anyone telling you well I don't feel like doing this today and then you have to settle because now you're like okay well now this person doesn't want to do it so now I don't want to do it so there's just pros and cons to like just to everything in the world. In the world, it's just pros and cons. But I don't think you should, Crystal, that you should feel scared or nervous to go travel alone. I think you're very personable, so I think you'll do great. Um, but just you know, just be conscious and just know where you're going. Just don't throw yourself in Colombia somewhere in Medi in Medellin, and then you're like, oh my god this is dangerous. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. But I definitely encourage for everyone to do a solo trip for at least once in their life. Okay. I am team. I like, um, small group trips. So oh. anything past five or more, it's okay. But that means it's typically personalities are clashing. Um, Mienza, so I am my sister's bride's a maid of honor. And even though we will post this live, I don't care if they, they watch this video, it's 11 women. And it's <laughs> like, I never knew it was going to be this much work to plan the bachelorette. It's like, everyone has a thousand things going on, but what they're supposed to be doing. And it's like, let's plan this. Let, and I don't want to be like the maid of honor Zilla and say, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This it's a girl's trip. So I felt like, Hey, 10, 11 girls together is a piece of cake. Girl, I should have just came to you and hired you and had you do the guide and do everything because even like the voting system doesn't, go ahead, just talk. <laughs> exactly, like um, I absolutely agree with um, what you said. Um, know yourself. So solo trips are fantastic because I mean, it's, you don't have to, you can do whatever you want to do. Wake up at 11 here or there. But I am someone that um, I'm a, my parents are going to so disagree, but I am what you would call a extroverted introvert. So I am more on the introverted side, but I can be extroverted with the, the, the particular people. Um, but I, I love traveling and I, for me, it's a, an experience I like to share with loved ones. So, you know, you have memories and I always want to do it with other people, but 
I do typically like traveling like with one other person or like a small group of three, because as you said, once it's like five or more, it's different personalities. Everybody wants to eat at different places. You learn to uh, which one of your friends like their home training because everybody lives a little bit differently. So, you know, there's a difference between going out with your girlfriends for dinner for an hour versus, oh, I have to, I'm waking up to you for seven days. Like, and yeah. you know, some people are morning people, some people are not. So um, I would definitely say if you are someone who is going to do a group trip, uh, be mindful. If you are the planner, be mindful of the personalities that you are bringing yeah. on. And uh, there's that. So I, I really truly do um, believe it's up to the person, but I am I am very much so, I like traveling in pairs or like, you know, a three or four people, like that's fun. After Anything after that is like, okay. Or I have a rule, like if it's a big group, I don't like traveling more than like four days then with a larger group because that's when the fun kind of die. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, okay. So if it's a big group, I'm like, okay, we can do an extended weekend trip because by that point, if you're getting on my nerves, we're about to hop back on this plane and go home. So I don't have to strangle anybody because I have some friends on a, I will not travel with you for more than three day lists. Like I had to put them on yeah. that list. So. And that's realistic. That's realistic. I think for you, Crystal, you should definitely, like, if you're going to have 11 women and you don't want to hear the, well, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to go here. You need to have a strict, strict well, it was, I, I tried it for the first month because we started planning. The trip is in August. It's next month. So I started planning in March. April and May, I learned a lot about these girls. <laughs> and once that hit, I was like, you know what? Okay. So now June and July, we do what I say, and that's it. This is not. This is not a democracy. This is a totalitarian situation. You go where I say, and this is. You know, you let me know your budget. The most I will stay within that budget, but this is where you're gonna go because one girl wants to get up at eleven. We have to be somewhere by eight. Another one wants to drink. Another one doesn't want to. It's like, what are we doing here? And it's like missing the whole point of the trip, which was for us to have this camaraderie with my sister. So like you both said, um, smaller groups are important and just knowing who you're traveling with too, right? Because not every person is good to travel with. You might have a friend that's a great friend that you, you know, they're great in your city. You can go out to eat and the movies and to drink, but to actually travel with, it's a different situation. And there's people you could do both with and there's people you could only do one thing with. So I, like I will keep both of you posted on, <laughs> I will keep both of you posted on that trip when I get back and let you know. But um, yeah. Crystal, what's your sign? A Libra. <laughs> Really? Okay. I was, to, I was like, are you a bird? <laughs> yeah. So before I open up um, the, the Zoom to our audience, um, one more thing I, I wanted to ask was about stay, right? Because um, traditionally hotels were the way to go. And now that Airbnb has become so booming in the past couple of years, we see more um you know, we, we see more movement and how we can travel and flexibility. So you can, you can get a villa as an Airbnb. You can get a bungalow in an Airbnb. Um, what are you, what's your take on the Airbnb versus traditional hotel stays? Um, I think there's pros and cons to it as well. You know, I love hotels usually have an airport transfer, you can get room service. If something's wrong, somebody is going to clean your hotel room. However, I am team Airbnb, especially again, if it comes to groups, because typically everybody can get their own room in certain places. Every now and then I have had hosts where, um, especially for like the villas in tropical places, they will, um, if you ask them for additional charge, have someone come in every day to clean. Um, usually they have pools. And then I'm someone who, um, I it depends my mood, but sometimes if I'm staying in a place a little longer and I wanna save, going back to like budgeting, another great way to budget is like to cook while you're on vacation. And my friends and I have done that before where it's like, instead of going out to eat every day, go to the local store um, and cook. And so Airbnb, 
Airbnbs are great because they usually offer kitchens and you can sit there and cook. So um, I absolutely love it. And they're typically pretty cheap. To, you can find pretty inexpensive ones and uh, nice where everybody, again, can kind of spread out, be in their own room, their own space. So um, I, I do like hotels. It just kind of depends where I'm going, I think is what I typically look at um, if I'm going to be in a city, I'm like, okay, I'll just, or if I'm, um, for instance, I went to a wedding earlier this year and it just made more sense for me to book a hotel because the Airbnbs were pretty far out and I needed to be at the wedding at a certain time. So I was like, I'm just going to be book this hotel to be closer. But um, if it's something where we have a lot of time, we're going to be there for a while, Airbnb is just, it's great. Um, those, I love those homestays. So that's my take. <laughs> okay. For me, I would say it just depends on like Neonza says, it depends what your, what your travels going to be for. Um, for me, I personally love hotels because I just want someone to just clean after me. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to clean after me. I want some room service. I want to be able to just go downstairs to the lobby and just like if I want, just want to go to the bar or just relax or chill, go to the go to the pool or if, if it's a tropical island, I'll just walk out straight to the beach. I feel like mm -hmm. um, sometimes with Airbnbs, um, you need to have a car to, to, depending on the distance. Some Airbnbs are a little bit far out. So I typically have to really, really research to see if the Airbnb is going to be close to um, re restaurants, bars, excursions. I need to see. I need to see these things before I book it, just because they might be far out. Um, when I went to Madrid, it was a big trip. I went to a wedding with my family, so for that, it was very convenient to have an Airbnb because it was a big group of us. And we all have individual bedrooms and we can cook in the morning together, save money by doing that instead of going to restaurants. And it was um, a big city in which I can walk from the Airbnb to museums and parks and stuff like that. So I think it just depends mm -hmm. on, you know, what kind of vacation you're going to be um, booking. If you're going to be doing a big group, I think it's great to have an Airbnb. Um, and just be conscious that just be conscious of how how far and what the distance will be from um, local activities or um, things that you may want to do, and you may also need a car because it might be a little bit far out. Um, but I think Airbnb is great. Um, it's a way to um, just have a budget a, a budget within yourself and your friends. But I'm definitely team hotel. Okay. I just like I just like the security of being in a hotel. I guess I'm old school like that. I just I just want to make sure that you know I have my security guard, making sure I'm okay and safe. You don't have that with a lot of Airbnbs unless you're looking like a luxury um, apartment with a doorman. You know that's going to be a little bit more depending on your budget. But definitely, um, I love me a hotel or resort. But there's nothing wrong with Airbnb. I definitely suggest it for big groups yeah that makes sense that makes sense and it it's true because um with the bigger groups like nianza was saying everyone has their own room so you don't have to feel like you're on top of each other um and you can cook there's like that camaraderie of like cooking together and spending that time but then yeah for security reasons i could definitely see what you're saying erica about liking a hotel like i was just in puerto rico um two weeks ago and i was out um i was being followed and I had left the hotel room, um, you know, I left my family in the hotel and I just left it to go get some ice cream. And I turned the block and there was a person behind me and I turned the block again and he was still behind me. And I was like, all right, maybe it's just me. I'm a New Yorker. I'm paranoid. So I'm like, let me go in CVS. I go in CVS. He's in CVS. So I come oh. out of CVS and I'm standing on the block and I'm pretending to tie my shoe and he's there. I cross the street. He's there. And I had such a sense of relief once I got to my hotel because he, he didn't come inside. There was that idea of the security of the hotel where if it was an Airbnb, he would have known where we were staying, where we were living, right? So like- That happened to me. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons. Yeah, pros and cons. 
Well, there's nothing wrong with Airbnb. Sometimes it could be a little bit cheaper, but also you want to compare. Cause some people think that Airbnb is always, might be always cheaper than a hotel. Sometimes it might not be the case. So just do your research, go to airbnb.com or I think there's another website. I think it's called Verbo um, that also does um, homes and apartments for rent. Um, you want to go ahead and compare the prices because you can go to Expedia and see a hotel for maybe one seventy nine a night, and then the Airbnb might be like two hundred. But then you'll see the cleaning fees, they you know additional fees that they might have, it might bring it up a little bit higher. So you just want to be conscious of you know your budget and just make sure that it's according to what you want to spend because not it. It's not always cheaper to go Airbnb. I think it's cheaper when you go in a group yes. because now the cost is being um, just a little bit smaller. So, so I'm like, so I'm team hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'll open it up for our guests to have any um, questions or comments, the things that they wanted to um, ask you ladies or share with you ladies. And then, um, yeah, if anyone wants to, uh, you can unmute yourself. You can ask Nianza and Erica anything about travel or any comments or questions that you have, you can do so now. I'll start. Hi, everybody. Um, so to comment about the groups, groups have been hard in my past. So what I learned was if you're going to travel with a group, pick one person that you're either going to share a room with or travel with. And then no matter what else happens, that is your person on that trip. And you give everybody else the information like, look, this is where we're going to be staying. This is where the, the, we're flying and whatever. And that has been really effective. Um, because when you have like 11 people, it gets crazy. And with Airbnb, I think it's crazy because you're depending on one person to book the room, but then like 11 people to, oh, the, the house or whatever, but then 11 people to chip in. And then if someone cancels last minute, like it gets tricky. Um, but my question to Erica and Nianza is about traveler's insurance. Mm -hmm. So something, you know, when you book your flight and you're like, oh, okay, cool. It's like, it's a great price, whatever. Then at the end, they hit you with the, for an extra $29.99 per ticket. Do you like, so I've, there's been times where I've taken it. And then other times where I'm like, nah, we're going to run it. We're going to risk it. But like, I have the kind of luck that like, I've been caught in this, like a, uh, there was a hurricane, a hurricane that I traveled. And luckily the airline, you know, did right by us and, you know, gave us, this was maybe 10 years ago, you know, they did right by us, but it's like, what would you all recommend? in those cases take the insurance don't take the insurance so all of me before uh, this pandemic i'm the same i was like i'm gonna risk it all i don't need to pay this extra 20 dollars like because i've always had luck but i think now with because there are um these rules about especially international travel you know you have to get a COVID test three days before you come in and I have seen some of my friends, and this is not to scare anybody, it's just the reality of travel where, you know, they've had a flight delayed or they've had, you know, problems um, getting out. And it's, it's like, yeah, this would probably be the time to do the travel insurance um, just because if, um, especially now, if you, uh, let's say you're trying to get back to the States and something happens and you don't get your test. Uh, back within, or you get sick or something over there, there's no guarantee they're going to pay or reimburse you for that flight. So then you're coming out with more money to um, spend on another flight and all of that. So I would just go ahead and spend the extra $20, $30 just to be safe. Um, it sucks, but it's, it's just a different time now because there's all these different rules and um, they're cracking down. I mean, it's, it's pretty strict. So that mm -hmm. would be, that's me um, right now. I never purchase travel insurance ever. I just risk it all. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to risk it. Whatever happens, happens. I never, I never purchased travel insurance, but I think as of, my second to last trip, um, my flight was canceled. They didn't have, they didn't have a pilot to go to Antigua and Barbuda. They didn't have a pilot. I was delayed five hours. I had to um, stay an additional night, meaning I had to get an additional um, night at the resort. 
And I think if I had travel insurance, those costs would have been a little bit less. So now I'm in, I'm in the middle. I'm thinking maybe I should um, consider travel insurance just because of how things are with the pandemic and COVID. Um, there's still a lot of workers that have not um, returned back to the airline um, bis business. So that's something to think about. So surely I think, you know, I think going forward, maybe you should, should, you should just get it just because you don't know. You don't know with your COVID results, if you're going to get it on time, then you have to reschedule and cancel everything. You don't know yeah. if there's enough staff because I don't know if you guys watched the, um, the news, but like American Airlines has thousands yeah. of flights canceled because they didn't have enough staff. So now your flight is being delayed. Now your travels are being interrupted. So I think going forward, I might consider getting travel insurance. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is a good point too, uh, to talk about um, bring extra, when you, um, in the past, you know, I've always had kind of a budget about how much I wanted to spend per trip. But now I think you should add like an extra 500 or so dollars to for, you know, in the event you do, uh, your airline gets canceled. In American, oh my gosh, it's, I uh, flew out to uh, Indy last month and just to leave, I mean, my flight just kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed again. So um, I think these airlines are still trying to adjust to um, this influx of travelers now and what they're doing. But I definitely think you should bring extra cash with you um, in the event that these things happen. It's one of those, those things um, because I've had friends where they literally, um, I had to get on one of my friends years ago where she literally like spent her last dollar on the trip and I had to help her pay some of her way to get home. And I was like, what would you have done had I not been here? <laughs> like, yeah. you can't yeah. do that. So I'm always tell people like, have your budget and then add an extra five or so, $500 or so to Absolutely. it. Yes, in the event something happens. Yeah. So um, Rosa said, in a few weeks, I'll be headed heading to Columbia with a girlfriend. We've hired a driver to pick us up from the airport and we'll be utilizing his services to visit different places. What do you recommend with regards to safety when it comes to meeting a driver for the first time and traveling with him in a country that is new to the both of us? Is this driver from a... Um from a certain company that that's a, a valid company or is this driver someone that someone that someone that was, was recommended by someone else um you have to you have to know these things like oh he was a, he recommend was a recommendation okay yeah. okay so he was recommended and if a friend used them in a prior trip i think you'll be fine mm -hmm. you know you just you, know, you got to be very firm when you meet this with this driver like hey this is this is what I want to do. This is uh, this is how the kind of trip I want to have. You know, I might these are my concerns. You gotta be you gotta set your boundaries from the beginning and just let these these um, drivers or anyone in these countries know what you're there for. So just you know, if it's a recommendation, then that's great. I mean, someone else has used them, but if you have never used a driver before, then you know you want to make sure that it's from a valid company. Look up the company up and make sure that this is valid just don't go with any driver because you just don't know you know they might be great and stuff like that but you just you, you never know Absolutely. I, everything you said I 100% agree with um and I would say too I had um a driver in another country this is not for everybody but we had whatsapp and we were texting each other too um, to build kind of like <clears throat> getting comfortable with one another. So I would say, um, you know, that is something else that I would download that app and have that as well. Um, that's a little bit of contact information as well. And then let somebody, again, I mean, we've, we've said this time and time again, let somebody know who this, this person is. They need to have their contact information. This is their name, this is their photo. You know, so in the event you go missing, let's not, I mean, hopefully that won't happen, but something happens, they have the information um, of who you were supposed to be with and where you were supposed to be. 
Yes. She said, what do you think about money conversion? Should that be done before leaving for travel or upon arrival? It depends on the country. Um, for me, I can use my credit card everywhere internationally. So I don't, sometimes I don't even have to take cash out. So you might want to see um, the guidelines for each country, make sure that they accept uh, credit cards that at restaurants, at um, your hotel, you know, you want to make sure that that's an option. That's my option. I usually use my credit card. It's secure. I know that I'm not going to have no issues. Um, the, the money conversion is going to be the lowest um, with my credit card, but definitely um, just check with each country to see if they accept, accept um, US dollars. That way you don't have to then um, convert money. But if you do, like if you're going to Mexico, they take pesos or Dominican Republic, they take pesos. You want to make sure that um, you go to, you know, the, the airport or just go online and just check to see what, how the money is at, and the rate is at that moment. So you're not getting like, you know, raped. So you're not getting, you know, hit in the head, like they say in New York. You don't want to, you, you want to make sure that you're not going to these places and that they're charging you a crazy fee or they're not even giving you the, the right amount of money. You want to go online. Online is the best thing in the world. Just go online and just check their conversion and check how the money is at that cer certain time for each country if you are going to um, exchange money. And just don't go to those little ghetto um, places in, in, in the streets like in the, the conversion. Make sure you go to a bank or you can do it at the airport or even some certain hotels do it as well. I went to Cuba and they were able to do it at the hotel. Okay. Yeah, I always do mine at the airport. It's, um, there is a mall that I go to every now and then um, <clears throat> that I used to go to and it was great, but it's the convenience for me. So I will do it at the airport right before I go or as soon as I land. Um, yeah. Credit cards are amazing, but there are some places that um, they don't, it's really hard to find, um, they typically take cash. So I remember we went to this like little place in the Philippines called Quran and you could use your card, but typically cash was what was widely used. And then on top of that, they didn't have a lot of ATMs. So I've always said too, like, if you're going to take cash out, um, I know we didn't really say this, but like take out extra um, in the adventure in these places that it's hard to find an ATM. Um, and yeah, ATMs are kind of sketchy to me. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm always like the airport, it's the safest place. It's the most convenient. Um, and it's, you're done. Like you tell them what amount <laughs> you want taken out. It's a, a simple exchange and you're, you're good. But I would also, another tip too, um, that I would say when it comes to cash as well, put it in different places. Do not ever, I used to make the mistake of like putting it all in one place and that will get you in trouble, um, especially if you know you uh, get pickpocketed or something. So I always like to distribute it as well. Like I'll put a little in my wallet, then I'll put a little bit in my bra, put a little bit in another bag and call <laughs> it <a> day. like <laughs> read it out. Yes, yeah. I agree. That's it. Anyone else have any questions or things to share with the ladies? Um, yes, thank you. You all have been fabulous. And thank you for having Crystal see the light. <laughs> <laughs> because I post a lot now, you know, my, my family, even when I'm with them, it's the day I get back or I'm on the plane that I'm like making the album and saying, had a fabulous time. And people are like, I can't believe you were here and you didn't tell us. And it's just because of that um, for all of those good things. Cause the one thing that um, I'm friends with the chief of police in our town. And the other thing he told me to do is make sure that the location feature is off so that when I'm taking photos, it doesn't capture the photo, the location and the exact location of where I am. So I've tried to do that pretty consistently. And 
having a love of travel and having a passport since I was a baby, my first passport picture is with my mom and always traveling. Um, I was laughing when you were talking about going to London and not the exchange rate. And I have family in London and I know I went the first time and I'm thinking, yes. And, I, and they're like, um, this money isn't going as far as I thought it was. <laughs> in fact, I, what happened to my money? It goes really quickly. But what I would love to hear from both of you, your experiences have been incredible. What has been, and I want to actually start with the negative first and then always, because I always like to start negative and positive. What was one of your least favorable trips or experiences and what did you learn? And then what has been your most positive trip and where would you tell people to go? I'm thinking. <laughs> Me too. I was like, I have my best one. I'm trying to think my least. I don't really have like a least favorite. I'm trying to think. I think. Or if there was an experience that like that might be a learning for, for us going forward. Um, you know, if, if something happened that was like a learning that's going forward. Definitely, I would say uh, Miami. I had a horrible experience in Miami. I went out with my friends, that was uh, her graduation. And we went out to just go get drinks and, and hang out. And I don't even understand how, we're just standing there talking and socializing. It's, that was, you know, back then there was so much people and I don't know how they did it. They literally opened my bag, stole my wallet, money, ID, credit cards, everything. Like they just, they stole everything. So good thing I was, I was in, you know, in Florida, not in an international country, in which I don't even have a passport anymore because people do like to steal passports um, internationally to, you know, try to use it for just negative things. So that was a bad experience. And from that day going forward, I made sure that my bag or whatever, it's right here. It's like, right, it's close to me like a baby. Like I, I'm not letting go mm -hmm. and just be conscious of, what's going on in my surroundings. And we said that in the beginning, just be conscious of what's going on in your surroundings. And also um, I went to Colombia with a group of friends. That was a little bit sketchy in terms of um, just walking at night. And it was um, a group of us, but we still were being followed. Good thing that we stayed at a hotel and the security guard was right outside. So the guy kind of like turned around. So those two, um, those two things really, really helped me in staying safe, being aware of my surroundings, just always, you know, looking back or, you know, just making sure that I'm not going out at a certain time. Like, I know it's fun. You have vacation. You want to be out somewhere super late. But I think that changed my perspective. And I love to just go out during the day. And if I am going out at night, it has to be with someone that knows the city and knows the country and I feel completely safe. So those are my two experiences that I have maybe um, that was quite negative and I learned from that. And from my positive trips, I feel like all my trips are positive. Even if there's a little bit of negativity, I take, I just take the positive out of everything. I enjoy every moment I have. Um, I enjoy the people that I speak to, the locals, I interact with them. We are in their country. So you want to speak to them and just say, hello, how are you? How's your day going? You know, you know, how long have you been a driver for? How long you've been, you know, cooking at this resort for? Like, they love that. Like, there's a lot of people that just travel and they don't even acknowledge them. So to me, it's like, acknowledge the people in these countries. You know, be mindful. These people are working so hard to accommodate accommodate us and respect so, them right like yeah. respect, respect who they are yeah. Yeah. yeah that's important that's important so that's something that I do everywhere I go I I interact with the locals I talk to them like if they were my brother or sister or my mom or dad and you know that it's the beauty of learning about their cultures so to me that's the most beautiful part of traveling is just learning the cultures speaking to these people you know um, finding the beauty of 
of this of the of the travel because we all we are all traveling for a purpose. We all have a reason why we're going to these places. Either we are sad, we're going through something through work, we broke up with, with our significant other, you're tired of your boss, you just need to get away. You know, mental health is so important right now. You want to get away for your for your own mental sake, you know. So there's so much reason. So to me, I always find a positive at, for every country. But Bali was amazing. So <laughs> Bali was very zenful. It was the best. It was beautiful. So definitely that's one of my top places that I've been to and I love and I think everyone should go and it's super cheap and it's amazing. I would say so I'm kind of similar with Erica like I've had so many amazing experiences even like the little stuff that's gone on I can't really say there was like one trip from hell where I was like okay but there was this time we went to Greece with a group of my friends and we booked an Airbnb or no, I don't, I think it was off booking.com and we get to the country first. We couldn't, um, we couldn't find a taxi or a van to accommodate us. So we get there, we, and this is in Mykonos. So it's a very small airport. There's only one airport. And, um, I think there's only like on the Island, like 50 or so taxis. So um, we were a larger group. So we had to wait for someone to be able to accommodate us. And then we, when we finally got these two guys to like drive us, the um, person we booked with wasn't picking up the phone. So we're lost on the island and everybody knows it's, it's a small island. So everybody knows pretty much everybody. And they're like, we can't find the place or whatnot. We finally get there. And um, like, it's not, it just, we ended up having to go book another place, which actually ended up being a positive because the place we ended up uh, booking instead was fabulous. Like we had <laughs> beautiful views. So it was like a blessing in disguise because the other place was like in the middle of nowhere. I was like, where is this? And um, the- Was it a hassle to get your money back? Uh, uh, so, it, my friend booked it through hers, so she had to do all that because <laughs> I was like, I didn't even want to handle it. We were just so exhausted because we were doing literally like country hopping. So, you know, once you get to another place, you just want to get like get situated and relax and we couldn't even do it. So they they did hook us up booking. Doc, I think it was with booking.com. They did hook us up. And the, the next place was fabulous. I was like, all right, that was worth all of that. So that's probably like the worst experience I had because it's a little scary too. Like phones were starting to go and then they were speaking, our drivers were speaking in another language, which wasn't bad, but like they could have, you, you never know. They could have been taking us up the mountains and like these American girls. So luckily they were really, really cool. And they drove us to the next place. We tipped them extra and thanked them. I think my favorite place to this day, if anybody tells, asks me, is Brazil. Um, I had a spiritual awakening there and that's actually, um, um, I had such a fabulous experience. That's where I basically was told like, you know, it was the start of my entrepreneurship journey. Um, I was told on the island, like, your job is going to kind of be taken, something's going to be taken away from you. I didn't know it was my job at the time. It was kind of crazy how things worked out. Um, but I had already been planning to quit. I had not told anybody. And it was like, yes, when you get back, you were removing that job. And like, we're going to move you forward in another direction. And I kid you not, like a few days later, I got back, got laid off and um, started my entrepreneurship journey. And um, so I, I love Brazil. And the funny part was I didn't even want to go there. I was like, I don't want to go to Brazil. And then it ended up being my favorite country. So uh, that will always just have a special place in my heart because there are just so many things that happened there that, um, you know, that just changed my life. Like my life changed from that trip. So. And this is why travel is so important. This is why we do what we do and we travel to these places because you just never know what would happen. Like that's beautiful. That's amazing that her life was changed just by going to Brazil and she didn't even want to go there. Yeah. 
Yeah. I literally had a fit. I was like, this is going to be boring. I was like, Brazil! Everybody got to go! <laughs> you didn't dance any samba? You didn't have a capirinha? Oh, that's my favorite drink now. Like, this is my favorite drink. I'm obsessed with it. Um, yeah. That drink is amazing. Uh, oh, it's, and it's like three ingredients. Kasasha, like, love it. So, yeah. Does anybody have anything else to ask the ladies or comment on, on anything else? Well, if no one else, I'll just jump in. I, the other question I had, and Erica, you said it best on like um, interacting with whether it's hotel staff, the drivers or whatever, is that one of the things I love when traveling is when you see the wait staff or especially in the hotels, the maids, and they see that you're um, a woman of color and that you're, you know, that you're treating them with respect and kindness. They just go overboard because a lot of times in the industry, they're either unseen or treated worse than whatever and which is really cool so you know I love that you talked about that but I also wanted to talk about um any experiences or tips about traveling while black mm -hmm. and are there places or experiences or or thoughts or concerns because I know sometimes I've said oh we should go here and we should go there and I'll have a friend who will say oh and black people are treated badly there and I will hear from somebody else who's like no that's fine so we'd just love to hear from both of you um it's funny I just had this conversation with my sister last night um I've never experienced racism outside of the United States. I have experienced more racism in the United States than I had abroad. If I go to, you know, been to places like, you go to like Alabama or, or Michigan or Wisconsin, or like I've experienced racism there and I've never um, experienced it abroad. So that's my personal experience. I feel like they're so happy to have me in their country and just, you know, indulge in their culture and their cuisine and their and and everything they have to offer I've, I've always been treated so so well I've to this day I've never experienced racism but you know I guess I guess everyone has um, a different experience um, for my advantage I uh, I speak Spanish so I am Dominican and many, many countries in the world speak Spanish. So I am able to, you know, go to all these countries and feel comfortable because I know the language. I can go anywhere in Latin America, Central America, certain places in Europe, even in Africa, there's countries in Africa that speak Spanish. So it's like, there's so much places that I, that I can personally go to because I feel comfortable um, going to these places and I can communicate with them, mm -hmm. but in terms of my color I, or or the of, or the the way I I am as a person, I've never experienced um, racism. Only in the United States of America. <laughs> I definitely, yeah, I haven't had too many um, bad experiences abroad. I think the worst thing that's ever happened to me is that um, I was called the N-word. Um, these guys were driving by and they were like, what's up my nigga? Um, and then I think in like parts of Europe, sometimes um, there are women um, that come from Africa and they are prostitutes. So sometimes they'll stereotype you. So I was out one night in this like tight fitted dress and was getting a lot of attention. And I think they assumed that and I was like, no, I definitely am not. But other than, you know, little things like that, no. Um, I think the biggest thing um, experience like traveling while black is like when you have your hair braided and you're going to, I'll never forget, um, we were going to Asia and I told my friend, I was like, don't be surprised if they start taking pictures of us. Like yeah. they, they do that um, because the first time I went to, um, Indonesia was the first place I went to um, in Asia, like 
in that area. And so uh, that was my first experience. But by the time we went to, I think like a year later, I went to Vietnam and my friend had never been to Asia before. I was like, they're gonna do it. I just want to warn you in advance. And it's funny, like we were standing in line waiting for our plane and it started with one person who was like, could I take a picture? And I was like, okay. And then they were, they started to have a line. <laughs> we were like, okay, this is too much. So some people are okay with that, but I can see how it can be a little uncomfortable because it's like, what are you doing with the pictures? And, you know, I know people don't mean harm, but like it is, or you get stared at. So I think that's the only uncomfortable thing that like the, the biggest thing that's been uncomfortable for me sometimes while I've traveled or, you know, people, I don't mind if they ask, but you know, some people just grab your hair and um, again, I know some people don't mean any harm, but it's different cultures, I guess. Where don't touch my hair. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's really I'm not a museum. This is not a museum. <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah. And there's debates because I I actually asked that question once on my platform. I was like, ladies, what do you feel? And I'm one of those people. I'm like, it just it it depends. Um, and if you're asking politely, but. I know I have some friends that are like, do not touch my hair. And I'm like, I get it. That's a, a boundary that you're crossing and that's personal space. So um, yeah, I, I definitely, I will say one of the positive things though about traveling is going to some of these countries and kind of seeing yourself. Um, yes. So sometimes they're scared. going back to like Brazil out. Um, it was so funny. We were on the plane and we were talking, you know, when you see people of color, you're like, hey, what's up my brother? And he was like, don't be surprised when you get off the plane, they're going to think you're Brazilian. And so we had never been there. And I think here in America, there are stereotypes of what like certain places, what the people look like. And I had always grown up like Brazilians are, you know, basically white women with big butts, you know, or, and then you get there and it's, I've never seen that many shades of brown in my life. I mean, gorgeous. So we hop off the plane and they thought we were Brazilian and they were speaking to us in Portuguese. And then um, even in Cuba, it was just funny to see, like, it's like, they look just like us, um, you know? And the only reason they could tell we were American, they said our hair. They're like, you guys come in with braids. Mm -hmm. So, or that's at least what one of the guys said, um, but they were everywhere we went, they could kind of tell. So I think that's one of the cool aspects of traveling. I'll say the, the more positive things um, that I've experienced. Like it's cool to see yourself in other places yeah. where um, you don't think we typically would be. Right. Yeah, and a lot of people think that Hispanic women or Hispanics are just fair skin. No, mm -hmm. when you go to Colombia, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, you go to all these countries, this is what the majority of, of us look like. Yeah. This is what a black Latina looks like. So people think when they're going to these countries that they're like, oh my God, you know, this is what a Hispanic woman is supposed to look like. No, this is how we look. So what, like you said, they, when you went to Brazil, they thought you were Brazilian. Well, that's because in Brazil, we, they're African-Americans. There's, there's European influence, they're Portuguese, there's this everything. So you know, that's the fun part, I guess, of me yeah. traveling to these places that I blend in. Yeah. I blend in and I can hang out with the locals. Some white people can't do that. <laughs> I'm just being real. So it's fun. It's, it's fun that I can blend in and I can interact and, you know, and, you know, that's the best thing of being a colored woman or a man that you can go to all these countries and you can just have fun with the locals you know maybe in europe in certain places maybe not but um definitely when you go to um caribbean islands or latin islands or latin countries it's, it's fun it's, you know, i think you get to see like um i think there's a uh there's black camaraderie in black travel right when you go to certain countries uh most black countries in the diaspora you're welcome because they see you i think there's a the misconception of the way the us and the black community in the us is and and the way that you know it's white against black here and in other countries it's like 
hey, we're all black. We're all this one thing. There's this one, there's this community that we have. Um, that's amazing. And I've witnessed that myself, you know, when whether I was in Jamaica, whether I was in Panama, whether I was in there, even I, when I went to Panama, they were like, what's going on with you guys in America? Because they just wasn't comprehending how stupid this whole classism and colorism and things can be, although they may have it there too, you know, they're having more structure of economic structure and infrastructure issues. And they're trying to kind of have that more camaraderie with each other, as opposed to what we're doing, it can seem more infantile to them. So I feel like when you're a woman of color, and you're a black woman, and you're traveling to a lot of our countries, a lot of our homes, it's just like, thank you for coming. And they, it's a pride that they have when they see a woman um, of color in, in a country that has the means to go to this country and go to a resort where they're just to help and go to a resort where they know the price of the room or the hotel or the flight or what it takes. And that's why I feel like it's so important to show them respect because it's like, hey, I'm your sister and I can stay in this resort like white people but I still can treat you like my sister, like my brother. And I think it's important for us to do that because they don't have that there. And so they see it and they know how much these rooms cost. They know how much it is to, to travel and they see all these white people there. And then when they see you, it's like, you know, so I think it's, it's our job um, to, you know, in our service as people of color who have the means to do these things to then tip them the right way and to say good morning and hello. And because they know, you know, we're coming from a place that we are fortunate to have this money and we look just like them, but we have a little bit more um, benefits and advantages than they do. And that's important um, in, in all of our countries and all of the whole diaspora. Um, and even when we do go to the, to the wider countries, when we go to Europe, it's like, yeah, I could afford to be here with you too. So let's be clear, you will respect me. And I think it's important for us because when we travel and we have the means to travel, even in these turbulent times, um, you know, it's a statement. It's a statement for black women to be able to travel. And that's important um, for us. So before we close out, I want you ladies to give some best practices to um, tell people how they can follow you, where they can um, continue to grow with you in your journey. They can see all your, all your travels, not in real time, <laughs> not in real time, but um, they can see what you do, um, whatever you offer um, and anything like that. So that moving forward, we can continue to grow and create this community. Sure. So um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at I am Neanza. So I A M N E A N Z A. Uh, that's where I pretty much I kind of um, refresh my my account. So there's not as many pictures on there right now. I archived a lot of things, but I'm resharing a lot of um, content and I'm actually reintroducing myself uh, throughout these weeks. Um, and then if you are someone who is in need of a city guide, um, you can go to my website at www.theanza.com and um, I can create a customized guide for you. So you just send me an email of all the information what you need. Um, and then I was also gonna say too, I have a free little wellness postcard. So if you are doing some traveling, you know, just to keep your immune system up. I'm all a team herbs. So um, I have like a little booklet on like what herbs and supplements you can take just to, um, and I was doing this before the pandemic hit, um, you know, just to keep, stay healthy, different things for like food poisoning and all of that. So yeah. That's and share all of that in the chat Nians, as well. Uh, yes. That's awesome. I love that. So my name is Erica and I have my Instagram handle, Erica star underscore. And if you go to my Instagram page, you'll see I have highlights for each country. And in within those highlights, I kind of give all my viewers and followers tips and tricks for each country. I basically share my travels, like if, like if you were there, so I want you to experience what I experienced. And um, all that information is in each highlight. Um, a lot of people usually DM me just for, um, for travel tips, 
for different countries and I have customized vacations for a lot of, of my followers for places that they see me going and you know they want to eventually go in the future or planning on going to so all my information is there and you know something that I want to work on is just creating more video content and just letting you guys see much more of my travel opposed to just photos and just stories so that's something that I'm definitely working on for this year and share that in the chat room as well yes thank you so much well, I want to thank you ladies for joining. As always, um, the Black Latina movement is about us, for us, what matters to us, um, and all the in all the different array of, of things that we uh, have going on. You can follow us on our social media, Black Latina Movement. You can go to our website, www.blacklatinamovement.com, um, spelled out, and you can see the events that we have coming up, digital shows that we have available, what live events we have coming up. And as always, thank you all for following us, for continuing to support us, support these beautiful Black women who are here today um, that are showing and giving tips on the importance of travel and safety uh, for Black women. And if you have anything else to share, you could do so now. All right. Well, have a good weekend. Have a happy Saturday. Um, be safe and we will see you next at our next summit. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.